A good movie that has a worthwhile story to tell will tell it succinctly, promptly and well within 90 minutes. The trouble is, sometimes those 90 minutes aren't enough to fill in the backstory or character development audiences need to invest and engage with a film. So any great filmmaker worth their salt will build some substance into the film. To build a world, establish a villain or raise the stakes, a film will sometimes allude to something but never fully acknowledge it. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 10 of the most disturbing details implied in movies. Number 10. The Girl in the Spider's Web – Don't Poke Your Nose Where It Doesn't Belong Aside from being an eerie continuation of Lisbeth Salander and Mikael Blomqvist's investigations into dark societies, there is some disturbing imagery throughout. Mikael searches for clues regarding the mysterious spider society and follows one trail that takes him in the path of a man called Milos. From the get-go, there's something off about Milos's facial features, in particular his nose, and after Mikael presses Milos further for information regarding the spiders, the penny is dropped and the mask is lifted. Milos reveals that his nose and upper lip are prosthetics and that he once followed the spiders just like Mikael is. Milos was caught and the spiders made their message loud and clear by removing Milos's nose, a rather gruesome way of telling someone not to poke their nose where it doesn't belong. Number 9. The Dark Knight Tryouts It's very possible to fill an entire library with the thoughts and musings on the character that is the Joker. From his motivations, philosophies and mannerisms, everything the Joker does is a meticulous chipping away at the sanity of society. Any Batman fan will tell you the Joker doesn't hold back and reasonable isn't a word in his vocabulary. So at the midpoint of the seminal groundbreaking comic book hit The Dark Knight, Heath Ledger scene steals once again as he recounts a haunting but possibly not true monologue about the origins of his facial scars. After slitting Gamble's throat, Joker looks to his captive underlings and offers them a chance to join his aspiring outfit. The only catch is, he's only got one vacancy and there are three potential applicants in front of him. What unfolds and what is alluded to as he snaps a pool cue and walks away is quite possibly one of the worst gang initiations ever. Three well-dressed goons, who five minutes ago were at best friends, are forced to fight to the death with one shard of wood between them. With guns against their heads and Joker's insistence that it be over quick, we have to take horrid guesses at how that whole scene would have unfolded. Does anyone try to fight back? Do two of them gang up on one and then thrash it out after? Just how cruel does it get? Best not to dwell on it and just enjoy the man in the bat costume. Number 8. The Empire Strikes Back – Han Solo's Torture In any trilogy, it's a well-known trope that the second film is often the darkest. The lowest points for our heroes come with betrayals, defeat and often loss, but they can also come with a darker tone to the surroundings and the plot. After being sold out to the Empire by Lando Calrissian, Han Solo, Leia and Chewie are taken prisoner, and Darth Vader returns to form as a vessel of cruelty and proceeds to have Han tortured by lowering him into a heating device. The film cuts away to Lando uncomfortably listening in to Harrison Ford's screams, and we can only imagine what that machine is actually doing. When Han is returned to Leia and the others, he weakly tells them that he wasn't even questioned by the Empire. Given that Darth Vader could have used the Force to read Han's mind, it's implied in this moment that Han was tortured simply out of cruelty and a message to the others. Number 7. Running Scared – The Kiddie Playroom Sometimes a gruesome implication doesn't have to always be subtle. It can be so blatant that it strikes us square in the face. But when it's a horrible and disturbing element that serves no purpose to the plot whatsoever, it almost has to make you wonder why the filmmakers put it in there to begin with. It's on this note that the subplot involving a married couple making and distributing child pornography is so tense and guttural that its premise and outline could be its own movie altogether. When Teresa arrives at the front door of the Hansels in search of the missing boy Oleg, audiences are confused to find no sign of Oleg, and the shady couple are dismissive of the phone call we saw in a previous scene. Teresa is almost out the front door when her motherly intuition kicks in and she's unconvinced by the Hansels' story due to their lack of family photos. Once Teresa gets suspicious and pulls a gun, the Hansel's facade unravels. The discovery of named discs with star ratings, children's costumes, assorted cutting tools, plastic flooring and cleaning equipment, not to mention a body bag, all becomes clear and Teresa puts the clues together. There's no explanation needed and we as an audience can piece together what's been going on in the Hansel's apartment. Number 6. The Matrix – If you escape the Matrix, you drown 
The first Matrix film implied a lot of disturbing imagery, and while the revelation that the endless fields of humans Neo witnesses when he awakens from the Matrix are energy harvests for a machine race, that isn't the most disturbing part of the sequence. Neo's release is intentional, and after a body horror sequence that sees tubes and cables drilled and whipped out of his body, Neo is flushed by the Sentinels down a pipe and into a sewage runoff where he is promptly picked up by the crew of the Nebuchadnezzar. Now that's all fine and dandy for Neo, but what about all the other humans that are freed? With all the glitches that can and do occur in the simulation, it's possible a few humans have certainly awoken from the dream. When the Sentinels inspect and dispose of Neo, it's done with such flippancy it's most likely a protocol and a common activity for the machines. This implies that with or without the help of the Resistance, humans have been breaking out their simulation and being flushed down the hole where they inevitably fall into the grey pond and drown. Number 5. License to Kill a Heart as a Gift how do you let your audience know that this isn't your grandpa's James Bond villain? Between Blofeld's penchant for sending insubordinates down a chute into shark tanks and Daniel Craig's enemies talking your ear off with world-ending monologues, there wasn't much diversity left when it came to Bond baddies being downright sons of buggers. That is, until Franz Sanchez popped onto the scene in License to Kill, and within 10 seconds of meeting him, we know he's a different calibre of evil. During the film's pre credit sequence, Sanchez swings by his girlfriend Lupi's apartment and isn't too shocked to find another man in bed with his lady. The bewildered gentleman is beaten and then taken off-screen by Benicio del Toro to have his heart literally removed from his chest. All while this is happening, Sanchez punishes Lupi for her infidelity by bending her over his lap and whipping her with a lizard's tail. The whole scene is jarring. The villains of Bond films were world-conquering madmen or Cold War enthusiasts looking to reshape the globe. Audiences hadn't seen a villain so personal or vindictive as Sanchez before. And while Lupi begs for mercy and forgiveness, there's an eerie sense that this kind of punishment isn't a new thing, and maybe Sanchez doles out these kinds of wicked acts all the time. Number 4. Looper the Amputation Sequence A classic trope of time travel epics is that if your past self is altered in any way, your future self will feel the repercussions. Examples of this have been shown in many ways previously, but audiences have never been stunned to a sickening silence until Ryan Johnson came along with his 2012 hit, Looper. The sequence in question shows Seth fail to close his loop and kill his future self, and old Seth goes on the run while past-slash-present Seth is abducted by his employers. What follows is a disturbing explanation as to how far gangsters will go to lure the old Seth back. It starts off with an address carved into young Seth's arm, which shows up as a scar on old Seth. As time runs out for old Seth to arrive at said address, the gangsters begin to surgically amputate parts of young Seth's body. Audiences watch as an old man literally falls apart piece by piece, starting with fingers, then a nose, feet and hands until he is eventually a husk. The last we see of young Seth, his remains are hooked up to hospital machines and we have to assume he is kept alive for the sake of his older self. Number 3. Arlington Road – The Firecracker Hand how does a film lure in its audience within the first minute? Open with a scene of a boy stumbling down a street with a bloody mutilated hand, of course. This entry and its implication only comes to fruition when you watch the film in its entirety and realise that Michael Faraday was being manipulated by the Langs from the very beginning. The subtle layers of subtext throughout the film and the way the Langs gaslight Faraday start to make the audience begin to question every interaction between the hero and the antagonist, even the ones before the characters have even met. Given how precise and particular the Langs are with their plans, there is no way the incident that disfigured Brady was anything short of an accident. The second layer to this implication resonates after the film's closing scene, with the Langs being so cold and emotionless about their attacks, we have to assume everything they do comes without regret. Number 2. The Road – Basement Dwellers Much like the book, the midpoint of the film sees man and boy stumble across a derelict house in search of food and supplies. After breaking the lock on a basement, man and boy venture down into the darkness and begin to hear weak moaning. It doesn't take long for them to discover a small stash of naked, withered captives chained and locked down in the basement, some of them missing arms and legs. Before the man and boy can catch their bearings, they flee the basement, while their horrific discovery tugs on their trouser legs. When the true occupants of the house return, it's clear what was going on in the basement. These starved and emaciated individuals were just a small example of the horrific depths humans would go to in the post-apocalyptic world. 
Cannibalism is a common trope in post-apocalypse stories, and it never gets any easier to digest. No pun intended. Number 1. Bone Tomahawk – Troglodytes Breeding Ground Bone Tomahawk follows a search party led by Sheriff Hunt, who venture into the frontiers of an unnamed state to retrieve a woman abducted by a feral cave-dwelling clan. To go into the specifics of what the troglodytes do to the people they capture would be stomach-churning to hear, but rest assured it's gruesome, vile and bone-chilling. But it's what they do to each other that really gives you sleepless nights. As Arthur, Chicory and Samantha make their escape out the caves, they pass a gathering of limbless, blinded women tied down to stone slabs. The moment is never addressed and we as an audience are only ever given a passing glance, but the film suggests at this point that the troglodytes remove the arms and legs of their women, blind them by hammering pegs into their eyes and tie them down with the sole purpose of breeding new troglodytes. If there was ever a moment where a film made your bones shudder and your jaw clench, it would be this. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other examples, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.